I fear no man, but that jar, it frightens me. <laughs> uh, you guys get to see, uh, I know I'm dressed up as Frankie the face, but it's not going to be for all this video. What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to make some high meat. And high meat is pretty much rotten meat, and these rotten and fermented foods have taken a place in pretty much every indigenous society. And it's understandable that if we would have scavenged a corpse many, many years ago throughout our evolution, you know, the corpse would have been laying around for a long period of time. And in, I did a video on mo how modern foods and how we love rotten foods like cheese, sourdough bread, and how in many cases almost every food people eat every day is rotten from yogurt or cheese uh, for breakfast to, you know, maybe pastured bacon. That bacon is a fermented food to some degree. Sausages are fermented foods. For lunch, we have a lot of charcuterie. Ham, salami, cheese are all fermented foods on sourdough bread. And then for dinner, you have a dry-aged steak or some sushi. Sometimes sushi is aged. Aged foods, more often than not, replace fresh foods in our diet. So why are people so averse? People will have no problem eating some stinky cheese, but as soon as you bring up rotten meat to the conversation, they're like, ugh. So uh, there is a difference between dry aging and uh, this method, of course. This method is a, a wet fermentation, whereas a dry age uh, develops similar flavors, but uh, less acidic and less uh, fermented flavors. Uh, dry aged meat will develop those nutty, beefy umami flavors as this will but this also develops like acidic bite to to the meat that is reminiscent of vinegar almost uh, that's the main difference here and the benefit of this food is there's three enzymes in meat there's the glycolytic enzymes that convert the glycogen to lactic acid when the animal dies that's why there's no glucose in meat there's the proteolytic enzymes, which break down the protein, the muscle tissue, when the animal dies. And there's the fat hydrolyzing enzymes, which break down the fat when the animal dies. And those proteolytic and fat hydrolyzing enzymes contribute to the fermentation of the meat and the fermentation of the fat. And what these do, to my understanding, is they alter the bacteria profile, heavily increasing the vitamin K2 content. And they also make the meat more digestible, so to speak. And the nutrients are definitely uh, more available to the body. Uh, and you have this, it's weird, the food doesn't taste too much different, but you crave it. There's something in these foods that you inherently crave. So I actually have, I have some high meat that I've been making already. And uh, here I have a jar of ribeye that I, I made this three days ago, and it's been on my counter for three days. And I ate half of the jar today. Uh, it smells like a, a mild cheese. It had this funk to it, and it was good. I ate like, um, and I cut it into pieces so I could just take a fork and have bites out of it. I just had, it's, it's good, it's really funky, and I have two more jars of it over there. So most people say you have to put this meat in your fridge and you have to air it out once a day. Uh, you know, airing it out once a day is a safe bet, but there's so much air in the jar, and uh, to prevent botulism, it just has to be in an aerobic environment. Uh, so whatever you're doing, if you air the jar out every day, you're going to be fine. Uh, fridge versus countertop. Countertop is just much faster fermentation, uh, from what I've, from what I understand. For me, it's like, what do you want to do? Like three weeks in the fridge, or you want to just leave it on the counter for three days? It gets way, way funkier, way, way quicker. And in the fat is where I've noticed the most flavorable change. I remember literally one time I bought some beef fat from this farmer and it tasted like Parmesan cheese. Uh, at the time I wasn't too into the, the high meat stuff so I only ate some of it and I threw some of it out. Uh, but that, that fat was also frozen at a point in time so whether or not frozen fat can be made into high meat, is, it's a definite, it definitely can be. Uh, but the protein structure is definitely compromised in muscle meat. So that's why I have some fresh uh, meat here. Uh, so here I actually have some, some calves liver. 
I have these glass jars I rinsed out with reverse osmosis water. And before you ever do something with the food, you want to make sure it's good quality initially before you waste your time on it. The liver sweet, no bitterness, no astringency whatsoever. We're good to go. Very happy with this. This is actually some of the best liver I've ever had. And when they say milk fed veal liver, it has to be mother's milk fed because formula fed will have an off taste to it. So I'm just gonna take a chunk of it like this and I wanna cut it into bite sized pieces. So when I come for this later, I could just take a fork and eat it easily. I don't wanna be I don't want to be cutting stinky liver in a jar. Like, I don't want to have to take it out onto a plate and start cutting it. Okay, so that's about as much as I would put in a jar. I don't want to, I want to just have enough air space at the top to like stir it around every few days. In the meantime, I got my little buddy Billy. So, Billy has one thing we're after, and that is the brains, as we used to scavenge brains, and brains are the highest omega-3 food on the animal. The reason I really wanna make these fermented is because I believe fermented animal brains are the reason we crave cheese now. Same with fermented marrow. I pay like $5 for each per head, so, you know, although it's not crazy expensive, it's definitely not cheap for just brain. I should probably, I usually eat the tongue and the eyeballs too, so I get at least something out of it. We got our jar of lamb brains that's going to sit on the counter. And we got our jar of veal liver that's going to sit on the counter. Uh, I'm probably going to do another jar of veal liver, then I'll eat the rest of it on its own beforehand. We'll check on this in a couple of days. And we'll taste it. I could, I mean, I could taste that now. It's, it's kind of funky, but I really want to see how the flavor of these transforms and we'll taste them. We know there's a noticeable nutrient difference, bacterial difference, effects on digestion in this meat. Uh, it'd be really nice to get some testing done on it to see how the nutrient profile actually changes. You know, get some fresh lamb brain, get some rotten lamb brain, send it into a lab, see how they, the tests vary. But all right, so it's been about two weeks. Unfortunately, I'm not, guys, this is not an exaggeration. Like, I was, I, I was holding three jars last night. I was bringing them outside to air out, and I accidentally, I dropped the jar of brains. <laughs> and thankfully, it was in plastic because it smelled fucking terrible. It was horrid. It was horrid. I did, however, end up tasting all of them throughout the progression of the aging, so I can still talk about how it tasted. Here I have the meat and the liver, but I gotta put these back in a bag and we gotta do this outside because this is ridiculous. Like the smell of these is horrendous. Oh, the smell of these is bad, but the brain was worse. So before I go outside and taste these, uh, we do wanna cover the aging process. It is aerobic. There is air in the jar. So although you guys might be thinking botulism is an anaerobic bacteria and that you can get botulism from leaving this stored in the jars, there's so much air in the jar that this is actually an aerobic fermentation. The main difference between this and dry aging is the moisture level. It's also very important to note that I adjusted my stomach bacteria progressively to this meat. Uh, so every single day I had a few pieces of it and now my stomach is used to the meat. So there's no worrying about, oh, am I gonna get sick from eating this? Obviously, if you let meat rot for three weeks and you eat it for the first time ever, you might have a problem. Uh, that, that's the big thing to keep in mind here. What I would usually do is I'd bring the jars outside every day when I was grilling, and I would just open the jars up and air them out when I was grilling just to, um, just to air them out. I mean, I don't really think you have to air them out every day, but might as well, right? So I just, I just brushed my teeth, so I really don't wanna do this, but I'll do it for you guys. <laughs> so before I taste the liver and the meat, uh, I did, uh, we did do the brain tissue, and I was, I was saying how I was really excited about aging the brain because, oh well, animal 
brains might have sat in the skull for weeks before we foraged for it. And I was like, well, I may be thinking it would taste like cheese. And uh, I think it's been about a week and a half now. I tasted the brain two days ago and it tasted like cheese and it was putrid, guys. Guys, the brain in comparison to this liver and this meat, the brain was so much more rotten and putrid. And that's because of the fat content. The fat gets much funkier, much more like cheese. There's a big difference between aging the fat and fermenting the fat versus, that's why people don't dry age lean steaks because there's no flavor. But that brain tasted like cheese. It was like, it was, it was really putrid. Like, the smell was horrendous. I tasted it. I was like, oh, this tastes like cheese. If you like cheese, you would really like this. So, uh, I'm sorry I dropped it, guys. I was, I was, I can't tell you how pissed I was. It was, 20, it was literally $25 worth of lamb brains in a jar, and I dropped it on the fucking floor like a moron. I could have probably scavenged it, but it was full of glass, like, and it smelled horrid, and I was just glad that the bag didn't break open. So, uh, it, it did hold true to what I thought would happen. The brain literally tasted like cheese, and it's safe to say that our taste for cheese and those fermented foods is from fermented fat, especially things like brain tissue. So, uh, this first jar here, this is the, the liver. Oh, fuck, man. What do you guys put me through, man? Uh, e each of these meats do have a different flavor and they do have a different smell, they do have a different fermentation. Uh, I, I did actually make some some Wagyu uh, high meat, but it didn't turn out, it had an off taste to it. Uh, might have just been the animal, so uh, the, the quality of the animal you buy definitely determines what, uh, what how the meat will ferment. So, this is the veal liver, and it actually turned white, um, and I noticed this after about a day. Uh, the veal liver went from a pale uh, pinkish color to a white color, and I'm assuming some of the bacteria that are, for, are ch changing the kind of protein and uh, mineral and vitamin structure are having that effect. dip a piece of liver in vinegar and that's what this tastes like it just tastes like sour and acidic liver this is the this is the meat the ribeye two week old ribeye that sit on my counter for two weeks oh ho, fuck holy shit oh, fuck. guys I'm not doing this again after this video you know that right like this is it Oh my god. You know, the thing is, it never tastes as bad as it smells. That's what I've learned with this high meat stuff. Oh my god. It's like pure rotten cheese. It's so fucking gross. It's not bad, but... It's, uh... Definitely an acquired taste. I actually got some... I got some fish roe that's been sitting in my fridge for like three or four weeks, so I'm gonna go grab that too for you guys. Guys, what is wrong with me? It's like November. I'm standing outside in a tank top, dressed up like an Italian gangster, <laughs> eating rotten meat. I don't... What has YouTube done to me, man? So this is the, this is the flounder row. This has been sitting in a jar in my fridge for, as I said, about uh, four weeks now. Still smells, I mean, like the ocean. Doesn't really smell too fishy. These eggs are, you can't, I don't think you could see this in the camera, but... The eggs are so tiny and small, they're hard to see. I mean, 
when fish roe ferments, it's a lot tastier. I find that high fish and rotten fish generally taste better than rotten meat, so to speak. Uh, I guess that's going to be it for this video, guys. I know we can only speculate that the vitamin K uh, amount is much higher, the vitamin K2 amount is much higher, which is very, very important for our health. Uh, ingesting these pre fermented foods can definitely uh, make them digest easier, add beneficial bacteria to our gut. Um, and I think we would have to look at studies associated with people eating high quality raw cheeses, fermented foods. I mean, when we look at probiotics and the benefit of probiotics, that's what these are. Any study where people are showing that, you know, there's benefits from various probiotic foods, supplements, we could always attribute this food, this high meat, this rotten meat, being a better version of it because meat digests better in our stomach and our stomachs are designed for eating meat so well. Wouldn't rotten meat be the best type of probiotic? I, I would assume so. And uh, this has been something that I've also been using to kind of help my SIBO and candida problems that I've been having. And it's definitely been working to some degree uh, to help with the beneficial gut flora. But uh, if I could recommend uh, anything, uh, you know, the ribeye after it was on the counter for about a week was actually pretty tasty. Two weeks now, it's just, it's way too far. The liver is still okay. I'm gonna let these sit on my counter in a bag probably for another uh, I'll have a few bites of them. I'll even have a few more bites later probably uh, just to keep, you know, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's a real benefit to eating these foods. I haven't noticed anything yet because I probably because I've always consumed a super high vitamin diet, but I just, I just want to keep up the consumption, see what happens, if anything changes. Uh, and I don't really like wasting food despite dropping a jar of brains on the floor. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support me, uh, please just share the video, share the channel. Uh, if you guys have any more questions related to specifically to high meat, to rotting meat, uh, the process is pretty simple. Uh, whether you do it in the fridge or on the countertop, just, I mean, it might, the bacteria, the flavors might develop differently, but the safety aspect is always, you know, take the jars outside, air them out. Every day is, is super safe. I mean, I'm sure really, if there's air in the jar, botulism wouldn't take hold anyway. And uh, if you guys want to check out my website, reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations or anything like that, uh, everything else is in the description. Uh, I got this idea, I know a lot of you Ajana's Vonner Planets guys are keep asking me to do this, but uh, I take my examples from the fat of the land with William R. Stephenson. Uh, that, that's where I first heard about this and where I first tried it. So uh, again, thank you guys for watching and uh, definitely don't kiss your girlfriend after eating this shit. <laughs> <laughs>